Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Wine with Jimmy channel. This is a wine educational channel, really just helping you enjoy wine even more. This is a, a presentation looking at wine and food. Now, I do many of my videos in series, which follow very key educational and curriculum text in the world of wine. So if you are studying the world of wine, you'll find these very useful. And this, act, this one actually falls in line with the WSCT level three. So here we are looking at wine and food. It's series two, talking about the application. And there are two parts here. So the first one, this video is on applying the principles. And part two is talking about alternative food and wine pairing approaches. Now, part two is only going to be available to those of you who are subscribed to my e-learning portal, which is a huge portal with lots of information in terms of exclusive video content and extra resources. That's over at www.winewithjimmy.com. Uh, so please do go over there to see all of the extra added content. So we're going to talk about applying the principles uh, to begin with. So really, we're going to reiterate around the sensitivity and the subjective nature of wine and food enjoyment. So let's talk about that to begin with. Now, just to quickly, if you do have any questions or comments or anything really around food and wine, please do pop it in the comments section of this video. Now, we've talked in the previous series, series about people with different sensitivities and also their bias, their preferences. So really, there is no real hard, set in stone, simple answer about what wine goes with the best foods. This absolutely depends on who you are and, in fact, the environment who's paying there are many things many factors that are taken into consideration so the ways in which food may affect the balance of wines are generally understood today and whether people like the results of a particular combination of course is very personal that's what we say up there the process is very subjective but generalizations can be made because most people prefer their wines to taste nicer, fruitier, less acidic, uh, and uh, less bitter and astringent. So we can use generalizations, uh, and it's possible to make some gentle, cautious recommendations. So when selecting wines to partner dishes, it can be helpful to divide dishes and wines into categories like high risk and low risk. Uh, of course, most foods and wines contain more than one of the structural components. There's often multiple factors to think about, in, including things like sweetness, acidity, uh, tannin or bitterness, and so on. So there are many possible options. It's not just matching one with the other or contrasting one with the other. There's multiple layers that need to be discussed. So let's go through some of the high risk foods to begin with, those that can cause problems with wine. First of all, sugar. There you've got a nice creme brulee sitting there. Now, dishes that are high in sugar should be paired with wine that has at least as much sugar as that dish. Otherwise, it's going to seem very thin and very uh, acidic uh, in comparison. OK, so that is fairly high risk. And of course, that pushes most of the wines into the sweet wine, dessert wine category, which some of us will have experience with, but not many do. So that's quite challenging. And of course, at a lot of restaurants and bars, there aren't many sweet wines. Uh, the kind of commonality today is to actually enjoy more dry wines in the general wine drinking consumption. Next are those that will have umami. Now, I have discussed in detail on the previous series 
what umami is and where we find it. Umami in the food will emphasize astringency and bitterness of the tannins within the wine. So therefore, the chosen drop will need to have the necessary components, such as concentrated fruit flavors, to be able to cope with this change in the wine. So you often need plenty of something. Certainly fruit, uh, for example, is needed when you've got something like a mushroom risotto, which the picture is there. Next up is bitter foods. So bitterness, uh, if you have dishes that have high amounts of bitterness, the, the picture there is of artichoke. This will further emphasize the bitterness in the wine. So uh, bitterness and tannic structure that comes from grape skins and the barrel. So it's best to consider white wines with these dishes or low tannin reds. Uh, so that's a challenge because, of course, if you don't know this, you're going to be eating artichokes, having any old wine, and it can be a certainly bad experience. And then chili as well. So could be classed as a high risk. This is very dependent on who you are and what you like in this. But dishes that have high in chili heat should be paired with white wines, but that can be complex or low tannin reds. Neither of them should be high in alcohol, depending, because uh, when you have the chili heat, it exacerbates the alcohol. So if you have a very high alcohol red, it's going to seem even hotter. Uh, maybe you are one that likes high, real sort of heightened heat and spice on the palate. You always go for the hottest dish in a curry house, for example, a biryani or something like that. Um, also, a wine's fruitiness and sweetness can be reduced by chili heat. So you'll need to consider wines with high levels of these components to make the wine eff uh, the effect on the wine less severe. So typically you will need very sort of ripe fruit uh, and low, tan uh, low tannin, low uh, alcohol reds. Often Beaujolais are very good with curries, for example. Now talking about the friendly foods, the low risk foods, now dishes that are high in salt and or acidity generally do pair well with wine. There is a ceviche from Peru in your picture. So typically with a ceviche, of course, very high acid, it's cooked in the acid. And then you have uh, the salt component as well, both of those very well suited to uh, white wines which have huge amounts of acidity. That acidity will be softened by this dish and then the real sort of roundness and fruitiness will come out of the wine more. You make it seem a little bit sweeter. You need to note, however, that high acid food should be matched with high acid wines because if you have a real high acid dish, so for example, if you have this dish, and you match it with a medium to low acidity white, it's going to reduce that acidity and make the wine seem kind of quite flat. So you will need a very high acid wine to go with this. And now we're going to talk about the wines. So a high risk wine. So the more structural components in the wine and the food, the more possible taste interactions there can be. So this makes, of course, pairing an art form. It's complicated, but the results can be tremendously rewarding and very interesting. So when we do food and wine pairing for, say, the supper clubs at my wine bar in London, then what we typically do is we, of course, have the dish in front of us and have numerous wines open and talk through seeing what is the best match, because it may be that acidity is offset, maybe tannin is offset, maybe alcohol, uh, roundness, interactions of aromas and flavours. There's lots of things to take into consideration. The most problematic wines are those that have high levels of bitterness and astringency from oak and grape tannins, combined with high levels of acid and alcohol. So think of things like a Nebbiolo, think of things like a Casino Mavro that you see here. 
they're great wines and when you're going to match with food they're spectacular but it can be more of a task more of a challenge to get the correct match in play uh, low risk wines are next as you can see there so simple unoaked white wines with little residual sugar are unlikely to be made unpleasant by any dish with a caveat because if you have a simple wine matching it with something like a barbecue you're going to of course have a bit of a challenge to taste the wine so you will need to be careful um, now so these wines change relatively little when partnered with food so the food and wine pairing experiencing can be less rewarding and less interesting when you get them right but still it makes the experience more positive. And further on this for low risk wines. So one of the most productive ways of applying the principles outlined above in the previous slides is to examine well established pairings and consider why they are successful. It's not necessarily talking about low risk wines here, but talking about real important classic pairings okay so if these reasons are understood then the other wines can be identified to provide also successful pairings uh, i like to mention here like you've got a picture of oysters and muscadet is a very classic match some say champagne but i prefer much uh, mus muscadet um, now the wine is unoaked there is no bitter component to be spoiled by the umami taste of the oyster. It's light in flavor and that won't overwhelm the delicate nature of the oyster and they're high in acidity. So it will still, still seem quite vibrant and refreshing when the oysters are eaten with lemon juice and have a high component of salt, for example. Uh, and once you understand this principle, then we need, therefore, to look at wines that are remarkably high in acidity, but with a general delicacy of flavor. So Muscadet is the classic, but then move to something like Etna Bianco from Sicilia, from Sicily, for example, which is also fitting the same kind of bill. A very delicate, fresh vino verde would work quite nicely as well. And that list will go on. So there you are. Um, so. The real, real sort of uh, key information there is, yes, do some research on some of these real well-known pairings. So it might be something like a Brunello do Montalcino from Tuscany with Bistecca Fiorentina, so steak Florentine, and, you know, try them out and then understand the principles behind it and apply it to other ones. Uh, so that's quite a key way of doing it. OK, um, I'm going to talk actually more in part two about things like that and what grows together goes together. So please do join me for part two where I go through those. You'll need to subscribe if you want to have access to that. And that is available on the e-learning portal over at www.winewithjimmy.com. Huge volumes of videos there and extra learning resources. Once again, any comments or questions, please do get in touch. You can do so by commenting on the video below. Make sure you click like and you click subscribe. Let us know about your food and wine experiences. If you do find yourself in London, United Kingdom, in the capital city, please come and say hello for a class, a glass or a bottle. I've been Jimmy Smith. Thank you.